Rolex, a brand associated with luxury, is a historical watchmaker which has conquered both land and sea. It's a name that everyone knows and is connected with accuracy, quality, and innovation. However, you might ask, where did the brand Rolex earn such tremendous fame and dedicated customers over the years? Also, what makes it the world's number one brand, which an orphan boy created? Let's get started with a brief story. The Orphan Boy Who Created Rolex since Rolex was created in England, many people believe that its founder was also English. He was, in reality, a native German. On March 22, 1881, in Kulmbach, northern Bavaria, as the middle of three children, his grandparents were affluent, and his parents owned an ironmonger in Kulmbach. Thus, he lived his childhood carefree. Both of his parents died soon after he became 12 years old. Wilsdorf and his siblings were left now that their parents had died. His uncle took custody of him and sent him to a boarding school in Coburg to guarantee that he had a decent education and a solid basis for his future. Life went on, and the young man arrived at La Chaux de Fonds, Switzerland, at 19, thanks to a school buddy. For the first time, he delved into the world of timepieces. La Chaux de Fonds was one of the watchmaker's best watchmaking locales at the time, the perfect environment for Wilsdorf to develop specialized experience and a passion for watchmaking. Kuno Corten, a Swiss watch exporting firm was his first known occupation. Wilsdorf corresponded in English with customers from England and America, and grew fascinated with motions and their mechanics. Above all, it was their precision and accuracy that captivated him. He relocated to London to start his own career in the watch industry, and found a suitable partner for his idea. He created his watch firm, Wilsdorf & Davis, with Alfred Davis. Although pocket watches were still popular at the time, Wilsdorf correctly predicted that wristwatches would eventually replace them. In conjunction with Agler, a Swiss watchmaker, the two started creating watches that immediately became popular. Rolex, or the birth of an empire. This laid the groundwork for Wilsdorf's success in the watch business, but it was just the start. Wilsdorf and Davis registered the brand name Rolex in 1908, after much deliberation. The name should be short enough to fit on a watch face, pronounceable in all languages, and have no additional meaning. I tried every imaginable combination of letters in the alphabet, Wilsdorf said, so I received a few hundred names, but none of them were up to my standards. An inner voice whispered the word Rolex to me one morning as I traveled through Cheapside in central London on the top deck of a horse-drawn bus. He was continually striving for excellence, and the mechanisms of his pocket watches were regularly improved. His efforts were already rewarded in 1910. In the Swiss city of Biel, a Rolex watch was given the world's first chronometer accreditation, setting standards that the firm continues to establish today. In 1919, Rolex relocated to Geneva, which had become the center of the watch world. Wilsdorf's talent in the ensuing years was not only in the production of new, technically advanced timepieces, but also in their marketing. Wilsdorf concentrated on the core features that still characterize a Rolex today, durability, accuracy, and little maintenance. He understood how to display his innovations to the public in order to get the most attention possible. This is what occurred in 1926, when the Rolex Oyster also debuted the waterproof Oyster casing, which is still used by almost all Rolex watches today. When British swimmer Mercedes Gleitz became the first woman to swim across the English Channel a year later, Wilsdorf presented her with a Rolex Oyster watch to demonstrate its excellent water resistance. Gleitz's record attempt was interrupted due to bad weather. She was taken back to the shore on a vessel after 15 hours and 15 minutes in freezing water, but her watch was perfectly intact. Rolex celebrated his victory by placing an ad on the front page of the Daily Mail, making their watch renowned worldwide. Mercedes Gleitz was also named the premium company's first brand ambassador, along with introducing the oyster casing. Tudor, a sister brand of Rolex, was formed, with which Wilsdorf followed another vision to manufacture less expensive wristwatches while remaining accurate and trustworthy. Wilsdorf also effectively leveraged other historical occasions to display his Rolex timepieces. The crew wore Rolex watches when the first planes flew over Mount Everest in 1933. This also demonstrated their effectiveness in the air. Rolex has positioned itself as a significant sponsor and partner in various athletic events throughout the years. Without their assistance, it isn't easy to picture activities like tennis, golf, 
or equestrian sports. Rolex found its way in all places, even those you could barely think of. The company even got involved with World War II soldiers, giving them new watches. At the start of World War II, Royal Air Force pilots purchased Rolex watches to replace their inferior watch brands. These timepieces were eventually seized in POW camps. Hans Wilsdorf, upon learning of this, offered the officers complete replacements. Wilsdorf was directly in charge of the initiative, which resulted in the replacement of around 3,000 timepieces. Wilsdorf's watches advanced quickly during the next several decades. The first Rolex Datejust was introduced in 1945. The Rolex Oyster Perpetual was unveiled during the first climb of Mount Everest in 1953 and the Rolex Submariner was introduced the same year as the company's first diver's watch. Meanwhile, Wilsdorf gradually exited the watch business. After the death of his wife, Florence Crotty, in 1945, he entrusted responsibility for his life's work to the Hans Wilsdorf Foundation, which Rolex has since acquired. He died in Geneva, Switzerland at the age of 79 and left the everlasting glory of his watches that continue to shine to date. And that's the story of Rolex and how it came to be a global sign of class and status. Would you love to own a Rolex one day? And what is your favorite watch brand? Let us know in the comments section below. Until the next one, peace.